Hey FlossTube, welcome to Creative Home Studio. Welcome back. If you're new here, this is a channel about punch needle cross stitch and all my creative whims, my creative endeavors, <laughs> painting and such. A little bit about life, but um, I'm just glad you're here. Thanks for joining me. So I was super stoked to see the grandkids last week because I had the week off prior to that to go to the retreat. So I'm going to insert a few pictures. Um, I was so happy because when Ellery got out of the car, she ran, this was the first time she's ever done this, she ran to me, arms open, uh, and I picked her up and she just laid her head on my shoulder and just held me and I was like, I was ready to cry. Whew, that made my day. <laughs> and then it was so funny because Brianna forgot to pack a pacifier for Easton. And I wasn't concerned about it because we normally like when we normally when they get here we feed them breakfast so we strip them down to feed them breakfast because the hot mess and she always has them dressed to the nines they always look so good and we don't want to ruin their clothes so they eat in their diapers but anyways um then when we put their clothes back on usually we take his passy off because it clips to his shirt and he doesn't use it at our house during the day often but when he goes down for a nap is usually when i give it to him or if he's at the end of the day, he gets really tired and kind of cranky and, and we'll give it to him then. But so we were like the guinea pigs or whatever you want to call it. I said, hey, you know, if it gets really bad, we'll be calling you at work. She lives right like walking distance to her apartment. It's like we'll be meeting you there and getting a passy. <laughs> but I was pretty confident it would be OK. And it was I had to rock him to sleep instead of just putting him in the pack and play. Um, but other than that, which I love that anyway, so that was all good. So babies are growing up. Yeah, um, yeah it's freezing here. Oh, I gotta turn my, I gotta turn off my furnace. I turned it down to 62, so I don't think it'll be coming on anytime soon. I, I usually turn it off, but well, I used to always like when I was recording, I would turn off the heat because it's my furnace is super loud. But then there were times when I would forget to turn it back on and then I would go up to the house like to make dinner, edit my video and all that stuff and then I wouldn't come back down to the studio till the next day and it would be freezing. I've had it down here like at 40 degrees. But if it were to like freeze overnight, I mean like if I broke the pipes and we had a leak and a flood and all that, I would be mortified and devastated. <laughs> so now my husband's like, why don't you just turn that right way down that way I'm like, duh, so chalk one up for the old man. Oh my gosh, I can't believe I just called him my old man. I've never called him my old man, y'all. Because <laughs> I, he, he does not call me his old lady because I don't like that term. I never did when we were dating, when we first got married. You know, some of his friends would call their wives that or their girlfriends. He never called me that because he just knew I didn't like it. And um, I've not, I don't call him that. He's not my old man. Oh, that's so weird that I said that. Hopefully he doesn't watch this one. He doesn't normally watch my videos, but once in a while they'll pop up. So I hope he doesn't see that. It's so stinking cold. That's why I started to say it's so cold here. We had, when we were in Amana in Iowa, it was, you know, seven mid 70s, upper 70s. And it was that way here. And even when I returned home, it was still really warm here. And then just one day this cold front coming and it's been cold ever since we've had snow nothing like 
a cumulative, you know, snow, just like a dusting and then it will melt. But, um, and then this morning, Kevin almost got a big buck, but his sight on his gun was messed up and he missed it. Cause I was up at the house. I can't come down to the studio early in the morning because he's hunting and he hunts right outside of the studio across the pond. So I heard two gunshots and I'm like, yeah, got one I'm looking out the window to see if I can see the deer but he missed it and he said it was a good size buck so anyways he's at the he went to Williams gun Williams gun site Williams whatever Williams where they sell guns and they have a shooting range and he went to get his sight dialed in so um, he also he grazed one so he did bow season here as well and he grazed a deer you know he found his arrow there was a little bit of blood but he said it was like just on the underside of the deer and uh he's like you know because that it's as a hunter it's always worrisome to shoot a deer and actually not have it to be a um a kill shot because you don't want them to suffer number one you don't want them to run off and then you can't find them and then they end up dying anyways so you don't get the meat um but anyways he said he just grazed it on its underbelly you know and he said it will heal up it'll be fine so he's really had some tough luck here with uh hunting but we have had a lot of bucks run through after does in our yard so you know um and he said when he shot at the buck today, it didn't like, it didn't spook it enough that it just took off. He said it like jumped and jumped and turned and it just stood there. So he had like a second shot and that's how he knew his sight was messed up when he, he must have bumped it. I don't know what happened, but anyways, it was messed up. And um, sometimes it just goes that way. I We have not had venison in a while though. And we love venison. I know people say they don't like venison and I know people get irritated when, when you say, well, you just don't cook it right. But it's true. I remember the first time I had venison, I was like, this is disgusting. It was made into hamburger meat. I did not like it. And so I don't know if it was, and it was not like it wasn't Kevin's deer. It was a friend of ours. We were over there for dinner and I didn't like it. I didn't like the flavor. It was gamey. It, it was just icky, <laughs> but Ever since Kevin's been hunting, you know, since we got married and he's been hunting and, uh, mm, I love me some venison. Oh, what else is going on? We're st working on the basement. So uh, you guys know from last year around Thanksgiving time, we really hunker down and get things done for Thanksgiving. Cause we usually have a million people over for Thanksgiving due to COVID. We're not having a million people over, but we still want to continue the tradition of getting a lot of things done around this time of year. So he is um, doing all the drywall fixing right now. And then this weekend I will be painting the other half of this, I almost said studio, of the basement. So the whole basement will be freshly painted. The ceiling is done on the one side. We still have the other half of the ceiling. And it's gonna be done differently because it's the way it's made it's like kind of goes up and anyways and the basement you know we had that remodeled i don't know if i ever showed you guys the remodeled um i said the basement the bathroom in the basement is remodeled and it's gorgeous i think i showed you guys the tile but i don't think i ever showed you pictures of it done i really should because it turned out so pretty and i go all the way like our bedroom is at the other end of the house upstairs i go all the way downstairs to take a shower not every time but there's because there's a shower right in the hallway. There's a, sh a shower, a dysfunctional shower in our master bathroom that see, we're going to get the bathrooms upstairs remodeled too, but they have to be done at the same time because they have the same plumbing and the one in the hallway, it's starting to do the same thing with the plumbing that it did in the back in our master bathroom. So it's about on its way out. So we're about to have two bathrooms remodeled upstairs on the main floor. So I'm excited about that, but it's going to be a total pain just because, you know, when you have things remodeled in your house, it's just so inconvenient, but, 
But I have, a, I have a shower down here at the studio. We have a full bath down here at the studio. And we have a beautiful bathroom in our basement. So it'll be fine. Where was I going with all that? Just the fact that we're slowly still working on the basement. You know, remodeling when you do it yourself just takes longer. And summertime... You know, it's always funny because at Thanksgiving we think, oh, we have a whole year till next Thanksgiving. We'll have the basement all done. Well, you know, after Thanksgiving, then there's Christmas. And then we're preparing for market. And then there's this. And then it's summer. And in the summer, there's all the outdoor chores going on. And we vacation more. We have more things going on on the weekends. And, and then the next thing you know, falls here. Oh, and then there's leaves. We have copious amounts of leaves to pick up. I say we, I mean him. Him and Ryan really worked on it. And, um, you know, just putting furniture outside for all that stuff has to be taken care of. And the next thing you know, oh my gosh, it's three weeks till Thanksgiving. We need to start working on the basement. <laughs> so it is a very, very slow process. Okay, I want to mention something to y'all. And this is not just about my Etsy shop, but any other Etsy shop or any online store. I, I truly believe it's more of a Michigan thing than anything else. But first class mail is slow. It's just slow. If you want to get your stuff in two days, then you want, you're going to have to pay for priority mail. But first class mail is just, it's slower. And I think there's an issue at a Michigan hub. I really do because we had a package, so we, you know, sent all of our shops, all the new releases, okay? And we, some things, or some things, some orders go into two boxes because they don't all fit into one. So we number it, one of two and then two of two. Well, that way the shop knows, oh, more is coming. They got their first box in a decent amount of time, and this was priority mail. The second box didn't come that same day. Didn't come the next day. Didn't come the next day. We tracked it. It got hung up in Detroit. Sat there for like two days at least. I don't know. But so there's something going on with Michigan. There was uh, f f four or five customers. All their first class mail was shipped on the same day. And they all, you know, see, and here's the thing too. Etsy gives an estimated arrival date. And I really wish they wouldn't do that because... They aren't taking in consideration the issue with COVID, you know, all the mail-in ballots that were going on. Now everyone's doing online shopping for Christmas because of COVID. So the poor postal service is just under tons of stress and working their tail ends off. They are running packages for Amazon on Sunday without getting paid overtime. I mean, it, it's crazy what's going on. So I'm just saying this, please be patient. Please be patient, especially if you order from me, because I really think there's something going on in Michigan. Uh, I had something that was sent to Swartz Creek, which is I could drive it there in 40 minutes. It took a whole week to get to like two towns over. So there's something going on. I don't know what, but please, please be patient. And like I said, not just with me, but anywhere that you order, uh, please just keep that in mind. You know, we're in strange times right now. Uh, COVID has really done a number on a lot of businesses and plans. Oh yeah, speaking of plans, you know I mentioned last week that uh, uh, Nashville market was moved to May. Well, not only can, you know, Kristen is working on possibly changing her daughter's bachelorette weekend so that she can be there helping me at market, helping us at market. Um, and it's not just the help, it's just about spending time together. She's my soul sister, you know, and we are super close and we just love hanging out with each other. So she's working on changing that. Well, the weekend before that is one of my very best friends. Her son's getting married in West Virginia. I can't go to that. There's no way the week before market because the weekend before market, we're leaving Tuesday before market. <laughs> So I can't go to West Virginia on that weekend and then be ready for March. It's just not going to happen. Then guess what I found out over the weekend? One of our other best friends, like John Maneer, was the best man in our wedding. He is in both of Kevin's bands. I said Kevin's bands as, as if he owns those bands or it's not like that. <clears throat> Anyways, he's in the 
both bands with Kevin, let's put it that way. <laughs> Like we're super close with them. We have watched each other's kids grow up and everything. Well, their son is getting married. Guess what weekend? The weekend of market. So it's just frustrating. It's like COVID continues to ruin plans and disappoint people. And it's like, I know we're all over it. So let's focus on the good stuff. Let's focus on creating. Let's focus on the extra time that we have at home to do what we love to do, cross stitch punch needle, painting, quilting, needle felting, anything creative <laughs> that gets your mind off it and makes you happy. So let's, you know, focus on the good stuff because otherwise it'll make you crazy. Okay, announcements. Y'all, I have another mistake. Oh my gosh, it's so frustrating, you guys. So I'm a one person. It's basically, it's me and Kevin running this business. It's just me and him, him and I, I'm really bad with that. Other than having model stitchers, thank you Jesus for my model stitchers. You guys are amazing. I could not do this business without you. I owe you so much gratitude. So it's just Kevin and I, I do all my own pro proofreading. I guess that's really not proofreading if you're doing it yourself and you're the one that wrote it. But anyways, I check and I double check, but I still make mistakes. So Jean of Attic Needlework got a hold of me and she says, I think there's an error on Oh My Bird. And sure enough, Oh My Bird is one of my new samplers in the book form. And what is wrong with it? Right here. So three, it says DMC. So you know what, I'm gonna come up and show you. I did put the page on my website too. I'll, I'll have a link below. So, if you can see. Okay, the circle DMC 3022 brown, gray, medium is a really, it kinda has a green tone to it. It's supposed to be it's supposed to be 3021 because it's the house roof on the house. It's all the really dark browns in here are supposed to be 3021 and not 3022. So if you go to TeresaCogat.com in, in the menu bar, it says pattern corrections. If you hover over that, the drop down says punch needle and cross stitch, or cross stitch I think is first and then punch needle. So I have two things listed on there. I know there's more that I need to add, but I at least wanted to get that one in there. And then remember last week, I told you guys about all the things, the Santa face color, 3,500 sand. I have it as a DMC and it's actually Weeks Dye Works, 3,500 sand. So. You know, it's weird because I have went for a very long time without having mistakes on my patterns or at least no one bringing it to my attention. <laughs> now all of a sudden I'm screwing up all over the place and I'm, I don't like it. And Jean's so sweet. She's like, don't you hate it when you find out you're human? <laughs> that was very sweet of her. That made me feel good. But yeah, it's just, especially when it's in a book like this, you know, I can't, I can't just throw these away and reprint them. You know what I'm saying? So anyway. Uh, Punch Needle, Primitive Stitchers Magazine. I'm, sh I know you guys all know it's out. I posted, I'm a, I'm a back cover girl. <laughs> so, uh, Frolicking on Fern Hill is on the back cover. And there's so much goodness in this book. Oh my heavens to Betsy. This, there's, I don't know a magazine out there that has the value of this. I mean, I know there's, um, just cross stitch magazine and stuff like that. But what I like about this particular magazine is it has the same feel throughout the magazine. For the most part, it's primitive or it's country, it's whimsical, uh, for the most part. There's some things in here that are a little bit brighter in color, but if you want more primitive colors, you can always change it out. So that's, you know, but anyways, it's just so, so, so good. And Vanna has her uh, finishing tutorials in here every single issue, which is super helpful, I know. So 
Very cool. Uh, I did post my finishing video of Frolicking on Fern Hill. So here it is finished and it's on a book. And in the, I'm gonna go ahead and answer this question. In the Q&A, somebody asked from Instagram, Alone Stitcher, she said, uh, how do you display the book once you have the project adhered to it? I don't think I've ever mentioned this once <laughs> in any of my finishing videos with the books. You wanna make sure that the opening, the open part of the book is at the bottom so that you can open it enough to stand it. So see, it's standing on my hand. So it becomes a, sh a shelf setter, basically. Uh, another great thing is for display at market, I use like louver doors, like you'd put on a closet or something, and this slips right through the back, and this part is in the behind, and it just hangs right on the display perfectly. So yeah, make sure whatever book you use that the open is at the bottom. Um, for all of you punch needle lovers out there, Doreen Branham has a YouTube channel called Primitives and Prim Privies. Oh Lord, I gotta look it up. I'll have a link below, but she also sells patterns by various uh, designers of punch needle. Let's see. Hmm. All right, I'm gonna talk about something <laughs> while I'm doing this. I have considered something that excites me and scares the heck out of me all at the same time. I've considered doing my floss tubes live. I've thought about it for, I don't know, a couple months. I just, here's the deal. I have the slowest internet on the planet. And I do a lot of editing. So it would force me to not do so much editing, number one. The thing I don't like about it is I do like inserting pictures of like the grandkids or maybe a little funny video. You know, those kinds of things would go away, which is a bummer. But for me to make floss tube videos, if I took out the editing and then I took out having to upload the video, it would save me so much time. And I'm always looking for ways to cut back on my workload. Yeah, I say that. My husband would laugh if he heard me say that right now. Cause I'm always like, oh, well let's do this. Oh, I'm gonna, yeah, mm-hmm. Let's add this to my list of things to do. And that's on me. Um, so let me look her up. Doreen, it's not under her name though. So anyway, let me know what you guys think. I might try one and see how it goes. I just, privies and prims, that's the name of it. Punch needle with privies and prims. She's from Lancaster County, Pennsylvania. And she loves punch needle. She is getting ready to do a big giveaway, a subscriber giveaway. So I told her I would mention it. She is close, to, she might be, plus my camera shuts off every 30 minutes and I have to restart. That's what just happened there. But she uh, is close to, or maybe she's at 500 subscribers now. Oh yeah, she, she's made it, she's at 597. So go over there, show her some love, join her page if you're into Punch Needle. And she also has another YouTube channel all about camping, which is super cool. I joined it. I haven't watched any of her videos yet, but uh, that's something I I like camping. And I'm not one, I think I mentioned this already, that I'm not one to maybe like take three years and just travel because I'm such a homebody. But I do love, especially in Michigan, we have waterfalls, we have beautiful parks, We beautiful parks. I mean, we are surrounded by water. We have gorgeous um, campgrounds, the, the sand dunes, there's wineries, there's just so much to do in Michigan and I would love to explore more. Oh, her video's playing and she just showed one of my punch needles. Thank you, Doreen. <laughs> but anyway, go check her out. I'll have a link in the description box below. So, and, and if you're into camping, check out her other one. I'll have that linked as well. So there's that. 
Okay, guys, I am going to do a newsletter. Those of you that have joined my newsletter, you know I'm not going to bombard you with emails because I think I don't think I've done a newsletter yet in 2020. I don't think I have. My goal was monthly when I first started my newsletter. That happened maybe for a little while, but that was years ago. Then I went, oh, I'm just going to do quarterly because it's it's a lot. It's a lot to put in it together a newsletter. So I thought, oh, I'm just going to do it quarterly, which I did that for a while. Well, then with my business exploding and being so busy, I haven't done one at all this year. So I am about to do one, though. I always do a newsletter around this time of year because I want to uh, announce the... Uh, Black Friday through Cyber Monday sale at my Etsy shop. I do that every year. So you'll get some savings around Christmas time, which is awesome. But even more exciting, I'm giving away a free chart to those who are members, or not members, but those who are on my email list. So I'm gonna have a link. I'm sorry, I'm closing out some windows so you can actually see this. I'm going to have a link below where you can join my newsletter. So you want to join it right away because the newsletter is going to go out between Friday, this Friday and Monday. Sometime over the weekend, I'm going to send out the newsletter and it will have the coupon code, have all the information for the sale, but you'll also have the link then to get this free chart. And I love this chart. I love this chart so much. And I would love to stitch it. We'll get to that later. But I wanted to have that Thanksgiving one stitched by Thanksgiving. That is hilarious. That is not going to happen. And then I thought, well, maybe I'll just put that one away and work on this Merry Christmas one because I have more time before Christmas. Huh, yeah. Christmas is a busy time. Just the, every, all the things that you have to do before Christmas. So, ah! But I wanted to show you guys the chart that will be free to you if you join my newsletter. I love how primitive it is. I absolutely love this one. And if anyone wants to stitch it for me for a Christmas gift, <laughs> I encourage that heavily. No, I'm kidding. I'm so kidding. I'm kidding. Um, however, if you stitch it for me, I'll pay you for it. I would. I love it so much and I, I want to make, I want to stitch it so that I can make it into a pillow. I think it'd be so cute, like sitting in a dough bowl on your table or sitting on a shelf or some sort of little vignette. Oh my gosh, I just love it. I love it, love it, love it. So see that thing I just said about, because I'll probably edit that out, but that thing I just said about, you know, hey, if you feel like, if you want to stitch that for me and send it to me, uh, I heavily encourage that. Now see, that's something I would say during a live, and then I can't take it back. So. <laughs> That's what worries me about doing live floss tube videos because I not only ramble, but sometimes I say things and then later go, mm, I think I'll edit that out. Yeah, makes me a little nervous. Maybe I'll leave everything in this video and not edit anything out is a test. I don't know. Okay. I already mentioned Black Friday through Cyber Monday sale. And then I already talked about doing... Yep, live floss tube videos. Okay, Q&A. Barbara asks, can you share how to sign up for the Midwest Cross Stitches Retreat? So Michelle Rudy is the one that puts on the Midwest Cross Stitches Retreat. The one in the spring, I think, floats at different places. But the one in the fall is, I'm pretty sure, always at the Amana Colonies in Amana, Ohio, Iowa. I always want to say Ohio. And... She's the person in charge of it. She does explain she in her last video. So she, if you, I'm gonna have a link below. Oh my gosh, see, these are the things I edit out. <laughs> I'll link below to her latest video, Floss Tube video. And she explains the whole process of who gets into the retreat. I guess that's it. Okay. Her channel is Farm Girl Makes Stuff and it's, and it's her uh, retreat recap video, basically. All right, Kathleen asks, why did you stop doing rug hooking? Are punched rugs easier to make and are they durable enough to use as a rug? I did, 
when I did that one rug, I showed it on Instagram. I'll insert pictures. Now, see, I can't insert pictures if I do live. Well, I'm just going to grab it for you then. That way I don't have to insert it. Like, I'm trying to make these videos easier. All right, so here's my first rug. Now, I can tell you what I did wrong on this rug, the things I don't like. So what I don't like is I did the watermelon rind, okay, in this kind of a direction. And then when I got that done, I started doing it this way with the pink and I just kept I was following that and then I thought oh I think I should go back and forth so I don't like where it's back and forth and then it meets this part that's going up and I don't know I just don't like that part um, other than that I love it I love the colors I thoroughly enjoyed making this I did not finish it so you can see I put the Binding is it called binding tape you guys? I'm not even sure what it's called. I have that on there But I just haven't I just got to whip stitch that okay, so this has been I don't know at least 10 years possibly more since I made this and I made this in a class not a class but like Was it a class? It wasn't a class basically it, a bunch of us hookers <laughs> There you go. Bunch of us rug hookers. We get together at, I don't even remember the lady's name. It was like a good 45 minute drive. My friend Jan and I would go and basically you sit around this lady's house and she is a teacher. She has a little shop in her house that she sells everything rug hooking. She is very talented at, at hooking rugs and um, pulling color wools, helping you color coordinate your rug and oh she's amazing if I think of her name I'll put it I'll put it below now see I won't be able to do that if I do floss tube live anyways um so I didn't like necessarily say oh I don't like rug hooking I'm not gonna do it anymore but my friend and I quit going to this lady's house and you know when you go to a person's house I, I, like if you have a monthly thing that you do with other people that you do in con have in common, cross stitching, you know, I know a lot of people get together and stitch together once a month. When you have something like that that you go to, you'll get your stuff done, right? I mean, even if that's the only day that you work on it, but a lot of times you want to see progress. You want to show progress to the people when you go, so it encourages you and kind of you know, inspires you to work on it in between. I can't remember if it was once a month or once a week. I'm pretty sure it was once a month. Anyway, when I got done with that, you know, my friend and I quit going to this lady's house and it just kind of, it kind of, you know, fell apart from there. I have a ton of wool. I have wool stacked up there. I have cupboards over here full of wool. So it's not to say I won't rug hook anymore, but um, I started rug punching because I got so heavily into punch needle. And I can't remember if I was doing punch needle at the time I did this rug, I can't remember, because it was so long ago. I might have done the rug and then discovered punch needle and then discovered, oh, I can make rugs with the same technique as a doing little punch needle. So then I started collecting wool yarn, which I have a huge display over here full of wool yarn to make rugs. Yes, it's quicker. It's way more quick. So basically, if you compare cross stitching to punch needle as far as how fast you can get a project done, it's pretty much equal to rug hooking and rug punching. Because rug hooking, you are working on the front. So I had the front of this on my gripper and you are underneath with your wool strip and you're putting your needle down in there and you're grabbing that wool strip and you're pulling it up and making little loops and you have to pull it up to make all the loops the same height. For my first rug, I think I did pretty darn good on it, to be honest. Um, and I'm not trying to brag. I just, I, I feel that my, the heights of my loops are pretty good for a beginner. I mean, I, is there room for improvement? Heck yeah. <laughs> always, always is, right? 
Um, but so you're working, you know, you, you're working from the back with your wool and, and pulling it towards the front where with rug punching, you're working on the back of the piece, just like you are with punch needle and you're punching. So it, you're like, you can do it a lot faster than you can with hooking. And are they durable? Yes, absolutely. I mean, wool yarn is very durable, so you can put them down and use them as rugs. I had another question from Instagram. She asked if punch needle was difficult to learn. I didn't think it was difficult to learn. I was self-taught. I saw someone, I discovered it when I was at Quilt Market. When I used to design fabric, I would always go to Quilt Market. Oh, that's another announcement. And uh, I saw these, I walked up on this booth and I just saw these little, they looked like miniature hooked rugs. And that's what I'm saying. That's pro And I love, you know, I love the look of hooks hooked rugs. I actually like the look of a hooked rug better than the looks of a punched rug. I'll be honest. But I walked up on this booth and I saw all these cute little punch needle things displayed. And then the lady was in there. Her name was Barb. Oh, she passed away years ago. I can't think of the name of her business, but she was in there working on a punch needle and I watched her do it like people were standing around and I'm like peeking and I saw her do it and she made it look so easy <laughs> and I was like oh my gosh I, I can do this I went home I bought all the stuff that I needed didn't know what I was doing but I figured it out by looking at the directions and I just taught myself and I loved it so much I wanted to learn it so bad like if you want to learn something bad enough you will spend the time to figure it out and I did and I fell in love with it so I also have some videos here on my channel that I recorded live, like I did punch with me videos. And I'm pretty sure I show like how to thread your needle. I think I show like how to do all of that stuff. I have punch needle information here for free. I also have for $37 where you can buy my punch needle tutorial and it gives you step by step and finishing ideas and everything and some little tips and tricks on how to uh, you know, hold your needle and, and just different things. So anyways, I do have that available. I'll have the link below. You also get with that tutorial, you get PDF downloads of some of my designs and it offsets the cost of the tutorial. So it's basically free if you actually download those punch needle patterns and do them. That's it for Q and A. Whips. Okay, guys, I'm going to be honest. Don't be disappointed. <laughs> I have not worked on my cross stitch since the retreat. And I'm going to tell you why. It probably sounds like a lame excuse, but I get up in the morning and I sometimes I, I'm like, get my laptop out because I, I have to figure it out before I can do it while the TV's on and commotion is all around me. Okay, so... You know, my husband's retired now, so he's home. Uh, Ryan is getting ready to move out December 2nd. He's moving out where our older son is now living with us. He's in between moving from where he was to where he's going. So he's living with us while he figures that out. So I got both the boys home now. My husband's home full time. My Our oldest son has a dog. So, like, it's a house full all the time now. And I don't have a lot of quiet moments like I used to, unless I did it down here at the studio, but my comfortable chair and my overhead light with the magnifier on it, all the stuff that makes it comfortable, there it's up at the house. And I, like I said, I just don't have a lot of alone time, quiet time to myself like I used to. So I'm looking for, my husband's talking about going hunting again up north with his brothers. So if he does that, you know, I will have a little bit more time in the morning, downtime by myself to figure this out. Because I know once I get the hang of it, and then I can have the TV on, I can do this, I can do that. So I instead have been so cranking on this punch needle and I'm loving it so much that I'm not making any apologies, I guess, <laughs> for not doing my cross stitch because I'm loving this punch needle. I'm getting to, a yeah, by the end of this week, I will probably be at a point where until I put it on a bigger frame, I'm not going to be able to do any more on it. 
but I have all of my lettering done. I've punched around all the lettering, even the tiny lettering where it says Psalms 118.24. Uh, that was punched with two strands instead of three just because it's smaller lettering. So let me give you a close-up of what it looks like. See, it always turns dark when I do that and it bums me out. So last week, gosh, I'm trying to remember where I left off, what you guys saw last week. You know what I think I, hold on. Don't go anywhere, y'all. Oh my gosh. Okay, my husband must be coming back. Athena, quit, please. Okay. So I'm looking at a picture from last week. Athena! Shh, shh. See, now, if this happens during a live, this is what we're going to get. And I can't do nothing about it. Oh, he's going out hunting. Hold on, you guys. Athena, no. Boo boo. Get over here. Come on. So I put her on the other side. You're still going to hear it, but it won't be as loud. Okay, so since last. Was it Wednesday? I think I did my floss tube. No, I filmed it on Tuesday. That's right. See, it's backlit. I need, maybe that's why it's showing so dark. Hold on, guys. Give me that sticky board. If I have something behind it with the light not being able to show behind it, maybe it won't be so dark. I hope anyway. All right, so since last week, uh, I just had like up to here done on the letters. So I got all the lettering done. I punched around it all. I still have fill in on the sides, but that's not a big deal. I had pretty much all this done. I filled in his head. I've gotten all this done. I didn't have any of this done over here, and I didn't have any of him done, and I didn't have any of this done down here. So I have done a lot. I've done all of this, basically. I filled in his head. Uh, and then I did all these leaves over here in the lettering. So I'm cranking right along, but I'm definitely going to, I, you know, I can't do the, I can't finish it in this frame. I ordered a, this is a 12 by 16. I ordered a 16 by 20 and a 16 by 18 or something like that. So after this weekend, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it off this frame. I'm going to have to sew more. I have scraps of weaver's cloth. I'm going to sew that to make it bigger because this won't fit on a 16 by 20. So that was my bad. My husband's like, hon, we, I, I cut the fabric. I can cut you any size you want. I'm like, yeah, that was my bad. So, um, anywho, I think I got a lot done and I'm, I love this. I love this piece so much and I love what it says. And, you know, it's such a great message. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Because you know what? Even though COVID sucks and even though it has disappointed people and ruined plans and people are sick and some people have lost their lives and stuff, we still have to get up every day. We still have to look at the bright side. We need to rejoice in every day. Because there's always someone that's worse off than you are. I don't care how bad you have it. There's always somebody's story that's worse. So just look at the bright side. Do your best to gleam any kind of happiness out of these times that you can. Um, I know people are suffering, you know, businesses closing and just um, anxiety and you know, loneliness and all that. It's, it's crazy times we're living in, but we have to... We have to look at the bright side. Okay, I'm done. Um, then finishes. So for CW Live, we finished our sweet little angel. Whimsy Chick Angel Friends. No, this is not Angel. <laughs> Whimsy Chick Friends. And basically, I think I had her done last week. I just hadn't done the crackle. So I got all the crackle done and her face crackled. I don't know if, it, if it's really showing up, but it crackled a lot. And I just think they're cute. I think it turned out real fun and whimsical. 
So that is done. And then tonight we're working on an angel in a round. Oh, it's going to be super fun. Okay. Finishes. Just showed that. Oh, uh, some previous punch needle finishes. Oh, I didn't go get the other one. Well, this is one. So even teeny tiny, teeny weeny tiny books have a place in punch needle. This book, look at my hand. Look how small <laughs> this book is. And it's super skinny. It's the coolest book. If I found more like this, I would totally buy a ton of them because I love this size and it was so perfect for this geometric shaped punch needle. It's just so stinking cute. Two bucks I paid for that. Yeah, so worth it. And then another one that I have. This is a retired pattern, but this is simple enough that you could just draw it yourself. It's basically <laughs> a rectangle with a heart inside and it says love at the bottom. But I, I wanted to show because I love this chippy frame. And this was back in the day when my weaver's cloth was this kind of taupey color, which I loved. And I framed with the glass, which I don't like that anymore. I don't like the glare. And it was before I knew about cool finishing and I would just frame it with the weaver's cloth showing. But anyways, this sits in my studio on the windowsill where I can see it every day because I love it. Ha, get it, love. A couple announcements that I completely forgot to mention. One is that, thanks to a good friend of mine, I'm going to be designing fabric again. I'm not, Okay, I got an email from Demdeco. Demdeco makes this angel plaque. This angel plaque has sold like crazy for years. I would say probably five years at least it's been available. Anyway, they emailed me and said that they're, at the end of this year, it will no longer be manufactured. And I'm going to buy a ton of them. <laughs> it's as many as I can that makes sense because people love these for gifts. Right now, I think I only have seven in stock, but I've emailed them and asked them how many they have in stock and you know I'm gonna go from there. But once these sell out, you'll never get to get them again. And it makes me sad and I wanna have some too. I wanna save some for my grandkids. But it's got sparklies on it. Oh, let me see if you can see that. Let me move it a little bit. So on her crown, and on her wings and then on the top part of her dress she's shimmery and she's super cute and it's I want to let you know it's it's like textured they made it to look like my original painting because my original painting started out with scrap of papers underneath and so <clears throat> excuse me so there's ridges and they I don't know if it's showing up but they made the uh, plaque so that it's got ridges in it to kind of mimic that. So anyway, I just wanna let you guys know if you want this and you haven't purchased it, go to my Etsy shop and order it now. Like I said, right now I only have seven in stock. I know I can get more, I just don't know how many more. And it comes with this cool, it's got a little write up, in, uh, which is super cool. And then it has this little dowel that you can put in it so it can stand on a shelf like that or you can keep the dowel in it and then it's got a little thing there that you can hang it on the wall. So I wanted to mention that. And then did I, t oh my gosh, did I already say this? But yeah, I'm going to be designing fabric. That's right. I don't, the contract sign, like it's a done deal, but I haven't asked them if it's something I can announce yet or not. So I'm not going to mention what company or anything like that. Um, but, and it's going to be very secretive as I'm designing with them and stuff because that's, 
that's what they prefer, which is cool with me. I'm cool with that. So I don't know if you guys know this, but when you design fabric, it's like a good eight months to a year before the fabric's actually out and available to purchase. You work so far in advance. It's kind of like the calendars when I designed my teddy bear calendar. You know, I had to have my 2022 images to them this past summer, <laughs> you know, because they pre-sell and it's all the things. So yeah, mm -hmm. you work way ahead of time. So, you know, I said that cause I'm excited about it, but don't be looking for my fabric for a good year to year, a year. Well, probably about a year, year and a half. I don't know. I really don't know. Okay. What else do we have? My battery is about to die on my camera. Another reason to do live video for my floss tube. So it's about to shut off on me and I'll just be back. Okay, so nobody sent me any um, fully finished pieces of my designs. So um, that's cool. That's all right. But <laughs> I don't want you to forget about it. If you have finished one of my pieces and you want me to feature it here on my floss tube channel, all you have to do is email me at teresacogat3 at gmail.com and I will feature that in my video, giving you credit, of course. And then if you can tell me what linen you used and if you use the call for colors and if not, what did you substitute with? I would love it. And if you have any tips on how you did your finished piece, I know people like to hear that. So please forward those to me if you're interested. All right, we're going to move on to haul. All right, haul. Hallelujah. All right, guys. So, all right, well, this battery is about to die too, so I don't know what I'm going to get done here. Anywho, a couple weeks ago, I sent out fabric to three different people that mentioned that they wanted to or offered their services for making project bags out of my own fabric that I designed like 15 years ago. So Kathy, I'm back. Okay. It's dark outside now. So my lighting is horrible right now, but I am one step closer mm -hmm. now to doing my videos live for floss tube because my battery died. I have three batteries sitting over there, all of them dead. So I had to wait, I don't know, 45 minutes for one of them to charge up enough to finish my video. Take a deep breath. <sighs> yeah, a little bit irritated. <laughs> you know, you like you're in the rhythm of it. And anyways, I pretty sure I left off with haul. So I want, I think I mentioned a couple weeks ago, I sent some of my fabric line of Dashing Through the Snow. The one I'm going to show you is not Dashing Through the Snow. I can't remember what the name of that one was. Anyways, sent out fabric to three different people that offered to make um, project bags <laughs> out of my fabric line. So, Kathy, I hope I say your name right, but Kathy Lonsbury. She emailed me and offered to make bags out of my fabric. And she has an Instagram. Her Instagram is so stitchy. I will have a link below so that you can go and follow her. She, I asked her if she had a shop or if she sold her bags. And she said, I don't at this point. I have my Instagram set up to sell. And she said, maybe this is the push that I need. So she is new go support her okay she said she had a bunch of bags that were you know ready to sell she just hadn't done it yet so anyways i'm going to show you the bags that she made and then some other goodies that she sent along o m g look how cute this bag is I need better lighting. Hold on, y'all. Look at this gorgeous bag. She did such a good job. It's really, really cute. There's just too many shadows. Oh, that's better. But look, they're all little teddy bear angels. And then the, the zipper pull, are you kidding me? 
What does that say? One of them says, shine like the stars, and then the other one has inspired stamped on it. Um, let's see. Zooming in? Zooming in. Anyways, it's super prim, which is absolutely what I love. On the back, look it. It's so stitchy. She has her own little tag. Oh, these are so cute. This is the other one. So that has the vinyl front. This one has a zipper in the front, but it doesn't have the vinyl front. And then the inside is this mustard that you can't tell because my lighting sucks now. <laughs> Guys. Oh, oh, you can see it. <laughs> anyway, it's mustard plaid. And then on the back, the same fabric base, basically. Then she was so super sweet and she put in some little extra things for me. So um, these are thread holders. They have a little snap. Super cute. Has a little snap. She put a little button on the front, which I think is really a cute touch. A little snap and look, a little heart inside. So it's got that fabric that your floss will stick to and then you can stick your needle in the little heart. She gave me two of those and she even put a needle in that one. She must have heard me say that I couldn't find needles to take to the retreat <laughs> last weekend. So super fun and so sweet that she made those extra things for me. And wait, there's more. She gave me some floss tags in floss keeps. I mean, are you kidding me? I am in love with these. Look how cool. So there's, you put your floss on those, but look, she must know me well enough to know I like that grungy look. And it's got my initial and it's got some keys on it. It's just super cool. Kathy, I just can't thank you enough for your generosity. That's just so sweet. And then the other one, oh my gosh, this is so fabulous. Looky, vintage Santas, vintage Santas. And then look, oh my Lord, it is so hard to try to show this stuff. Like, come on. <laughs> Anyways, it's a cool little Santa. And again, has some keys on it. So, so cute. So, so Kathy, I am just so grateful. That's just so sweet of you. I love it all. Love it all. So I have project bags now, you guys. I'm excited. And then she put the little floss keeps in the rings and that. And these little burlap bags that are super cute as well. How many times can I say cute in a segment? I mean, like seriously. Okay, so new in my Etsy shop. I will be putting all of my new releases in my Etsy shop later this week. It might even be this weekend, but they're coming. So I just wanted to give you guys a heads up on that because I know some of you don't have an LNS and you like to buy from me and, and I truly appreciate that. So that's coming. Um, I have some weekly whims, but I'm just gonna wait and do that next week because I'm so out of the mood. Like I 40, for 45 minutes I went and did something else and now I'm like, I'm out of my rhythm. So I'm just gonna go into giveaway. Last week I mentioned I would give away Lincoln's Eagle, which is one of my new releases and I will insert the YouTube random comment picker here. All right, let's see who this week's winner is. Da da da, look at all those names. Madden and stuff said, be generous. You were extremely generous with all your tales of the trip. So thank you so much, Madden. I loved sharing. I loved sharing about the retreat. It was so much fun. So Madden and stuff, if you could please email me, I will get your Lincoln's Eagle right out to you. And thank you everyone who commented. I loved all the comments. Alrighty. So thank you, Madden and stuff. You need to email me please at TeresaCoga3 at gmail.com. But when you do, please tell me your name, 
your address and what you won. That'd be so helpful. If you don't hear from me in a couple days after you email me, just go ahead and email me again. Um, I get a ton of emails, guys, and I miss things, unfortunately. So this week, I don't even have my angel card ready. Ah, this week, <laughs> that's so funny. Look at the angel that's on the top. It's angelic vision, and I just showed you that plaque, and it's the same angel. But this is angelic vision. This is by far my best-selling, most loved angel. I sell her in prints, like unframed prints. I sold the original painting. I've painted her a couple times since then, and those originals, like people love this angel. I think it's just the color and her, her face. She's just so chill looking. Anyways, on the back, it says, when life gets difficult, get up, get dressed, and look yourself in the mirror and say, not today. I've got this. All right, guys, that's pretty encouraging, isn't it? In these times of difficulties. So I'm going to say about that. Let's see. Your phrase is going to be, I've got this. Yep. So just mention in your comments somewhere, I've got this. And what are you going to win? <laughs> How about if we just do uh, a pattern of your choice? Um, a pattern of your choice. Punch needle or cross stitch pattern of your choice. Okay. So I want to insert a segment. I'm not doing the Chinese fortune teller. I don't have anyone really giving me numbers for that anymore. I think people kind of forgot about it, which is fine, because um, I wasn't doing it there for a while. There we go, that's much better. So, because I, I wasn't doing it there for a little bit. Uh, but I, I, I follow this person on Instagram, and every time he posts something, I mean, it takes my breath away. And I really just felt like, his work needed to be shared. So I'm just gonna read a bit about him and as I go over his work, I will show pictures of his work. And then if I run out of things to say and I still have pictures to show, <laughs> then I'll just add music. But I gotta go get my paper. Again, if you are not prepared for your floss tube and you do it live, it's gonna be a hot mess. This one would be a hot mess. Okay, so this artist, he is a needle felting artist and he's one of the best I've ever seen. So let me introduce you to Simon Brown, the gentleman felter. Needle felting artist Simon Brown lives in a small village near the North Northumbrian coast of the UK, which he describes as surrounded by castles, cats, and copious amounts of tea. He creates masterpieces using discarded old brushes and gives them new life with his whimsical wool felted animals. The bristles of the brush beautifully mimic grass and the handle proudly displays the carved title of the piece. Simon's work captures moments of curiosity, fear, and love between the animals he creates. For instance, his work titled A Brush with Danger shows a curious, or maybe hungry, fox staring down a field mouse. You can almost feel the wind as the brush bristles blow back, exposing the little creature. The mouse can escape to safety in the hole of the brush, but Simon simply captures the moment of surprise. You can follow his work on Instagram at The Gentleman Felter. All right, guys, that's all I have for you this week. I hope you enjoyed our visit today, and I hope that you have a wonderful week. We are approaching, approaching, fast approaching Thanksgiving, and uh, I don't know what it's like in your state, but we are encouraged to have only no more than 10 people and no more than like people from two different households gathering. So we'll see. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> Anyways, guys, we will see you next week. And don't forget, create every day. Bye now.